Welcome to this Google SketchUp screencast. This screencast is designed to show you how to create a building in Google SketchUp. I'm working on a Mac. Google SketchUp is located in my applications area. It's either under G or S. The icon you're looking for is a little house with a pencil. And the program name again is SketchUp. When I double click on that program, again I'm on a Mac, this might happen on a Mac, you get the keychain wanting to request a password. You can just click cancel twice to get past that. From the startup screen, you need to click on Choose Templates, and the template we're going to use for this project is Simple Template Feet and Inches. So I'm going to choose that and then click Start Using SketchUp. I'm going to go a little quickly through how to create a building. Uh, feel free to pause this or rewatch if you miss something. This is our starting canvas. Before we begin our project, it's a good idea to do two things. One is to turn on our tools. So I'm going to go up under View go under Tool Palettes and turn on the Large Tool Set. This has some of the same tools that are located up here at the top, but there's also a few more tools we're going to use that aren't located at the top. So I'm going to leave this toolbar off on the side. The second thing I'm going to do is do a file, Save As, and save this to my student folder or maybe to my flash drive, and I'm going to save it as last name dash building. And it saves as an SKP SketchUp model file. Some things to point out tool-wise, these are my view or camera tools up here, the orbit, the pan, and the zoom. Those are how I look around in my environment. I'm going to click on orbit and click and drag to circularly orbit around what I'm looking at. I'm going to pan. Pan with the hand allows me to flatly move. And zoom, if I click and drag down, that zooms out. Clicking and dragging up zooms in. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to get started. I'm going to use my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw the base of my building across the three axes here. These axes represent length and width on the ground and then blue is height. So I just drew a square. Actually I'm going to undo that. Draw a little bit of a different square here. When you draw a rectangle or square, once you finish drawing, I've clicked and, and now I'm dragging and I'm going to release the click. I can type in what I want that shape to be size-wise. So I'm going to type 50 apostrophe, comma, 50, apostrophe. That means 50 feet by 50 feet. And you can see that in the bottom right-hand corner. Anytime you draw something in SketchUp, you can manually type what it should be, hit the return key, and it'll automatically adjust to that size. I'm going to click on my four arrow move tool and move this into position. I'm going to be careful not to have this go below ground and, or be floating above ground. If I orbit around, I can look at that. And now that I've got my base of my building, I can use the push-pull tool, which is this little cube with the arrow, and if I mouse over a shape I've drawn, I can click and drag up to make that building or make that block start to come up out of the ground. If I go lower, it'll go below ground. I don't want to do that. I want to come up. And again, you'll notice the distance in the bottom right-hand corner. It says how big it's, it's rising to. Uh, let's say I want this to be 25 feet. I can stop clicking release my click and type 25 apostrophe return and the object has now gone up exactly to 25 feet. I can use my other shape tools here, my pencil tool. I'm going to use a, a square tool. Let's say I want to make a column come up out of this. I can draw that. I can raise that up. Uh, I could take the circle tool. I could draw a circle. I can rise or push or pull that rather in or out. So maybe I'll let that sit in a little bit if I'm going to make that a window. All different things I can do. I can use this triangle tool. It defaults as a triangle, but really it's, it starts off as an octagon. So maybe the shape of your building or a shape you need to use isn't just a perfect rectangle. Any shape you draw you can push or pull up or down. Let's say you want to draw something. You can use the pencil. Maybe you want to draw a triangle. Somewhat equilateral you could then push or pull the triangle up or down. So all different things you can do with these shapes. You can make the shapes work off of each other, so on and so forth. Okay. Some other things. You can paint the surface of any of the things you have drawn by using the paint bucket. You can choose a color. So let's say I wanted to paint this yellow, and this yellow, and this yellow, and this yellow. One thing to keep in mind with this being a 3D shape, I've only colored two sides. I'd have to rotate around and color the other sides as well. In the paint bucket area, under colors, you can also choose, if you click on this brick, you can choose from this menu some different types of layers that have been put in here. So if I want to make this look real, from this menu, I might choose the brick and cladding, 
and choose that maybe this should be a cement building. And again, I'm on my paint. Oops, I'm on my paint. I'll use a brick here. And so now I can click here and make this look like brick. I can choose roofing and give the top of the building. Oops, sorry. Choose some shingles and give the top of the building some roofing look. Uh, maybe I want this to be a window. I can choose. There's a choice in here for translucent, meaning it can be you know some see-through objects. So I'm going to choose this window-looking one, and now when I look around, I can actually see through that as if it was a window, and my little character is still way down there. Okay, so that's how you create that. Another thing that's good to know is when you use the pencil tool, let's say I draw, I start on an edge here, and I draw across to here. That line, I can now move that line using the four arrow move tool and raise it up or down. So if I was looking to make kind of a roof on a house, I drew my line, I use the move tool, and I can kind of stretch and move this any which way. Probably want to make it look somewhat real. So I can do that with the move tool. Let's say I had something that I created and I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. I can draw, I can not draw, I can grab my arrow here as my select tool, select around my object. When the whole thing is selected, I can use this scale tool. When I click on scale, it turns on these little cubes, kind of similar to clip art, where I can drag corner to make the object bigger or smaller. In fact, let's do that right now. I'm going to use the 3D text. I'm going to click on the 3D looking A. I'll call this Kafka Castle. I can change my font, uh, make it look all different. When I place this text, when I choose this 3D text like I did, it places it on the surface that I'm, that I'm going to click on. So I'm going to click on right here. and Let's go zoom in on that a little bit. Pan down and zoom in. Now that that's still selected, I can choose scale. Turns on those little scale cubes again. I can make that bigger. So this will be the front of my building. Maybe I'll make this nice and yellow looking, bright. So there we have now put, if I click off of that, some 3D text on the building. All different things you can do. When you create your building, please put a name on the building. It doesn't have to include your name, but put a name on the building. When you're done, also use the, the other text tool here, this little text flag. Click on the topmost surface of your building and then click once to plant the flag and then another time to position where the flag will go. And actually put your name. 